Kodak's Dance is a four-year bachelor program. Together with circus and music, we are part of Kodak University for the Arts. We are based in Rotterdam, a very vibrant city, with many performances going on, many artists and many cultures. I think Rotterdam is the most cultural city here in Holland. And that really adds to the value of this education. Um, I chose coders because, of course, coders provide us strong technical classes, but also all the teachers really do appreciate like unique individual uniqueness and artistry. And all my colleagues are from really different country, really international. So we are able to learn each other and get inspiration from each other. Here in Conart, we try to educate students to the best within their potential. And we believe we have to do that within a context where there's a lot of variety. Classes that are based on the more modern styles like Graham and Cunningham, but also floor work and counter technique, all combined with ballet each day and improvisation and drama and special weeks where you go out of this building and find your way to create your own work in a museum. Uh, theory classes, music, dance history, anatomy, psychology. There's so much that we are going to offer uh, in these four years because we believe this is what dancers nowadays need. It's not a machine who does steps, they have to be creative people, they have to deliver to the choreographers and for that I think uh, such a variety is really necessary. Um, being an NDT now, I look back onto being taking class in coders every day. I realize how beneficial the broad range of techniques and influences they offer at Codarts has been for me um, and how much that has helped to shape the dancer that I am today and I think also the person that I am today. And that's thanks to the great team of teachers that is in Codarts always. And also I think that this really broad range opens you up to all the possibilities out there in terms of dance companies and repertoire and um, it helps you Orientate. I think orientation is a very big part of the curriculum of coders. The repertoire in Conard's dance is very important to us because that is a big step towards the professional field. We invite choreographers, young choreographers, just starting choreographers and very renowned choreographers. We find it important that students work with both. Coming from like a small um, island, I'm actually from Curacao. I had a different view of contemporary dance and coming here, I really got to know how much deeper it can go. How a wide and broad contemporary dance is. So everyone's approach to it can be totally different and still totally valid that you get inspired by, that makes you also driven to develop your own way of approaching this art form. We travel. We've been to New York with the students, we've been to Russia with the students, we've been to Italy, we've been to Poland, we've been to Germany. We also have a tour every year, it's called Talent on a Move, which tours around Holland between 20 to 30 different theaters uh, with a program of between seven and eight short pieces of 10 minutes. But the, it also gives them this constant um, relation and experience with being in the working field, which is something we really, really try to enhance. Because it's very important for us that not that we're just teaching them how to dance, but we're also teaching them how to be professionals and how to go out into the working field and deal and, and relate to the working field. <laughs> Uh, one of the most important experiences for me was the talent on the move um, because it really prepared me uh, in a professional way 
um, by touring all around the Netherlands, I have, have had the possibility to refine certain skills of mine and to brought them to the next level. I had the chance to work on myself, not only as not only on my persona but also on my artistic side. And nowadays, uh, working as Capino, I if I look back at that, I find it super beneficial for me because um, it really forged a huge part of who I am, and it gave me the the right base to then proceed in the professional field. We are also focusing a lot on the own colors of the dancers, the diversity. We believe that you don't put people in a mall and you take them out and they all look the same. We really want to see what makes that dancer special. So that combination I find really um, something that we focus on together with the working field that we bring in by asking a lot of guest choreographers, we ask a lot of guest teachers in all different styles so you really become an all-round dancer. <laughs> You know, we have our vision here and what we stand for, but within that vision, what we stand for, we also hear the students' voices, which is, is important, because they also know what they need. And because of our experience, we can also facilitate that for them. And everyone has an individual path, and discovering that individual path with each student is also very exciting. And that we make sure that the students understand that their creativity is also warranted, and how to think out of the box, how to know how to think with a choreographer, but on the other hand, also to learn those traditional tools of being a dancer, how to reproduce choreography, how to, how to be yourself, how to put yourself into somebody else's style and still do their thing, but be yourself. For now, I'm really focusing on uh, my personal growth and improve as a dancer, so I really want to build my uh, the best dance version of myself and I think that Colors is the best place to do that and uh, yeah I heard that many students are in great company so I really wish I can be one of them in the future. Welcome back everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, short promo and as you could notice I was also there but with a different haircut uh, <laughs> and yeah it was great because I think we could already see some insight of what Codarts is and some visual about what is Codarts. So now I'm really excited and honored to introduce our director of the dance department, Caroline Harder. Welcome Caroline. Thank you, Andrea. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you in this position. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, would you tell us something more about your position in Codarts and how, what does it mean to lead such a big education like Codarts? Oh, I'm very proud. Yeah, I'm very privileged, I think. Yeah, it's uh, wonderful to work with so many talented young dancers and the energy that they have. So that always inspires me to come to work each day. So. It's a it's privilege. Amazing. Yeah. And how many dancers, for instance, apply every year for Codarts? We have about uh, 600 uh, people applying on the That's auditions. Quite That's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I wish I, we could help all of them, but of course we have limits. And we can take around 30 students in each year. So yeah. that's quite a, a challenge. Yeah, I imagine. And how do you perceive the education in Codarts? So, how do you see? the dancer growing after three years of, four years actually, of this education? Yeah, well, we take all kinds of uh, types into code arts, although there is a certain profile, I think, that is linked to code arts. Uh, but it can be that people come in with a lot of technical skills, but it can also be that we uh, take people without those technical s skills, but we see the talent there. So, And then within those years here in Code Arts, we offer a program where we think it really builds up towards that future in the work field, but in an individual way. So there is, of course, a framework and you more or less follow the framework, but within the frame, there's a lot of freedom to explore, to make mistakes, and then to develop yourselves. And to watch that process, uh, yeah, we can steer it a little here and there, and we can help you through it. 
Uh, but it's wonderful to see that, especially by the third year, when people go on the tour, and people will explain a bit more about that yeah. later, <laughs> we, we can see that you're already grown-up dancers. Yeah, but and also being inside of Coders, I can really say that there is much about diversity and uh, it's great to have the possibility of growing together with uh, many different type of dancers so it's really different uh, and it's great of course yeah and it's also nice because the work field doesn't ask for one stereotype eh? they want also to see all those personalities and it also makes that within uh, our school there's not that kind of competition and when you all look the same you're maybe yeah. fighting for that one place yeah, yeah. but we really yeah, try to steer really you inspiring uh, environment i can say uh, yeah. so that everyone can bring something more in the education and uh, you know you get inspired by watching other people so i hope uh, so and that you can learn from each yeah. other and would you like also to say something more about how do you manage the health of your students in codarts Mm, we find health very important that we educate you in a healthy way and that already starts by that you're all people and no machines um, and that we want to hear your voice and your opinions. Uh, it also means that we offer programs that teach you uh, about health like nutrition or psychology or anatomy and that we have a health team around that can help you with injuries, that can treat you with physiotherapists and psychologists and to make it a, even though, of course, we always challenge to find your, um, uh, yeah, to go over your borders, you know, to go always a bit yes. further and search. It, it, it has something that is maybe not that healthy, but we still try to provide a very healthy environment yes. to do that in. Yes. And how many facilities are in Qatar? So, for instance, how many studios or... What else do you provide in the education? Yeah, well, the building, you mean? Yeah. I mean yeah. Well, we're located in the center of Rotterdam. Uh, we have about uh, uh, 10 studios, and we have this theater space where we are in, where we also perform. Uh, we have uh, places where the physiotherapists and other health uh, practitioners are working. There are theory rooms because we also have theory in the program. And it's not only dancing for the whole day, but we find it very important that you learn how it is to create that own opinion and that you can write something so that you become very, um, uh, what is it? Mm, help me. Veerkrachtig. Uh, resilient. Resilient, yeah. Uh, so that when you step out into the world at some point, you are able to, you know, to, to do well and to feel good and to have a certain level of self-esteem, I think. Absolutely. Would you like to say something more about education or anything? The content of the education. I think much is said already in the film, so yeah. I don't try. Yes. I try not to repeat <laughs> too much. Um, the education is built in a way that in four years you will reach that um, that entry towards the working field, yeah. and the first two years are very much focused on gaining skills because we believe that you need skills to, in the end, do whatever it is that you want to do with that. So the first two years are very much focused. There is ballet every day through all the years. Um, but we focus on the Graham technique and the Laban technique. Later on in the second year, Cunningham, there the floor work comes in. We have improvisation, drama. We have the theory classes. Um, artistic research we find very important because you have to start to develop your own voice in movement material and in dance in general. And then by the second year, we in the first year already, there is repertoire coming into the program. But by the second year, it starts to build up. And even further in the third year, the third year is mainly focused on having guest teachers, many influences from what the field is about, many guest choreographers. We have a tour in the third year, and Keith will explain later on. And then uh, by January, the stage audition starts. Yeah for the apprenticeships and the fourth year is fully out of this building. We still guide you, but on a distance. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm in that direction. So, of course, it's scary, but uh, we can talk about it later with Sara, maybe. Yeah. And great. Thank you so much, yeah, Caroline. Welcome. It was really, I'm really happy to talk with you. 
and maybe we can continue. And uh, now we will present another short video about uh, the module of uh, performance and creative skills. Enjoy it. Welcome back, everybody, to the online open night of Coders Dance. I hope you are enjoying. And I also wanted to remind you, if you have any question, please uh, write them down online so that later and uh, actually in a while we will have a Q&A happening. So please, for any questions, don't hesitate to uh, write it down. Um, so we continue, and I'm really uh, happy to present you uh, Coders coordinator, Sanya Mayer sajik Hello, Sanya, the coordinator Hello. of Creative Skills. <laughs> How are you, Sanya? 
fantastic. I feel really proud and good to see this uh, short promotion you just uh, witnessed uh, and uh, to see our students create and go crazy Great. because that happens here as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And Sunny, I wanted to ask you some question about um, uh, improvisation and artistic research, mm -hmm. first of all. Um, what is the role of creativity in coders then? And uh, what is the importance then also of improvisation and artistic research in coders' curriculum and education? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, dan dancers nowadays, uh, besides acquiring high technical dance skills that we offer, they uh, simply need to also develop their artistic voice and uh, own unique movement material, individuality, uh, creativity, be being able to collaborate, to be outspoken, to think and write analytically. Um, well, uh, just simply to find this one unique self that is going to uh, distinguish them from somebody else. Um, so those subjects are basically there to offer the tools. So improvisation and composition um, it goes from year one to three in the first year. It's finding out first who you are, what your movement material is, and uh, we give tools to expand those tools to learn to improvise as a solo uh, group. You saw in some of the uh, just videos that we have witnessed yes, how they can do that so yes. very well. Uh, but of course, um, uh, to create, uh, first of all by themselves, but also in collaboration with uh, their colleagues. Um, so, so yeah. that's where they learn those improvisation tools, but not only. Um, they are uh, given also by a lot of guest teachers that we have. We have a uh, faculty teachers teaching. Um, besides improvisation, composition, there are also different subjects like a drama where they, you learn to use your voice, text, how to express the emotions, embody those emotions as well, transfer into different um, uh, personalities because we need that also. As a performing artist, you need to be able to... Um, uh, become also somebody else sometimes and not just yourself even though of course dancers nowadays you, they need and they 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 want also uh, to find its uniqueness uh, and this individual voice and to stand also to be able to speak as an artist uh, about social context maybe that is happening what is important for them um, and that's also where we go into artistic research uh, where uh, this is one of the subjects a module that we offer uh, is uh, where each student actually chooses the area of interest and that is supported by the curriculum by different subjects in the curriculum but also uh, so dance subjects but also theory subjects that are given so then um, you choose your area of interest. That, it get, that can be really different. It can be connected to the science, to dance, to health, actually, the health problem that we have, maximizing performance, uh, 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 maximizing performance program that supports also the well-being of the dancers. So we had also uh, students that chose to, um, for example, um, investigate how the healthy mind can influence also the healthy body or quantum mechanics or, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's very great. varied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, as a student, I have been through a lot of different processes, let's say, during these three years. So mm -hmm. we have many different projects coming up and um, that are not really related to the curriculum. So they're mm -hmm. a sort of break of the normal curriculum, let's say. Could you explain something more about those oh little yes, projects? Yes, you love those, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they are called Special Weeks, um, part of the performance creative skills. So what happens in those Special Weeks, the, our normal curriculum and classes stop and for one week, um, uh, we offer a new a different program. So it's uh, mainly given by guest teachers. It's a lot of lectures, workshops, working with the choreographers that we invite. Um, and again, it's developing those creative skills, uh, curiosities, uh, talents uh, with of the dancers, something they have to discover, maybe where imagination comes from, what how they get motivated to create. Um, 
So um, uh, there are different subjects like dance and motivation in the first year, dance and live music, learning how to perform and create um, and uh, with live music, dance and visual arts. So students go to the museum, they get lectures on visual arts. Uh, and then create a performance on location, often sometimes here in the building, but also in the museums. So often we perform in the museums, in different festivals. So there's a lot of projects where we also invited to as a, a as called arts to contribute. And sometimes is that with a repertoire, but sometimes it's also with the works of our of students. Um, of course, there are thematic workshops, and then. There is own work as well and uh, a youth production. Um, so uh, what happens uh, is that in the second year, the students create a work that is uh, specially designed also to attract non-dance public. We find it extremely important that we not only present dance and art to um, the public that is familiar with art, but also that, uh, as dancers call it, normal people get to see dance, actually, and the teenagers get to see dance and get really close to our students and for our students to be able to get to know them. So this is youth production where that happens. Students create their own work yep. uh, with a the theme and perform. Which is really fun. Which is really fun for us. Teach also they learn you learn how to teach also workshop, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. Um and but it's also youth production as well, which there right. is a multidisciplinary uh, yes. atmosphere coming out. And Absol which is great. Which yes. because we collaborate with uh, another school. And that's a blind date. That's a blind date, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a blind date. <laughs> that's a blind date. Uh, since we are part of, uh, of a university for the arts, that mm -hmm. there are many other disciplines around us. Eh? There's yeah. the conservatorium with the classical music and the pop music, world music, music theater. Uh, there is a circus part in Cone Arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday it has been announced that we will merge together with the Willem de Koning, which is a higher education for visual arts. So that makes it possible to meet all kinds of students and to collaborate. Yeah. Mm -hmm which is really great and it's a unique opportunity to collaborate with different kind of artists, which is great. Absolutely. I think it's uh, essential nowadays for the artists to also uh, to be able to learn different language or, or and, and to understand different art forms. And yeah. Blind Date is one of those projects uh, where you as a third year student collaborate with our uh, composition students here in, at Codarts and indeed Willem de Koning and they are uh, from different departments of visual arts, fashion, um, film, photography. And uh, so you're put together we in a cooking cook pressure <laughs> <laughs> for two weeks and uh, you have to get to know each other. Yes. And at the same time, a creative work, which is performed yeah. here in this theater. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, own work, which you also saw some examples, which yet again another project where you can choose yourself uh, the theme and what you want to uh, express, Absolutely. right? Yes, and it's great, it's amazing. I really love that those kind of projects. And also, I wanted to talk you, with you about the auditions in Codarts. Oh, yes. Um, so many people applied, uh, as uh, already Caroline said before, and I think it's also a, a, a big dream of uh, many uh, y younger dancers that want to apply to uh, such a bigger education that is Codarts. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, so, how, how are the auditions and what are you looking for in the audition, maybe? From your professional experience, what would you look for? What are you excited about looking at other dancers? Um, well, we really remember you very well, for example. <laughs> so besides being <laughs> impressed uh, by your technical skills, but also we saw, okay, what you maybe need to learn at the time when you did audition. But what really spoke to us is the sparkle you had and your solo and imagination that you were able and, and your performance and artistic qualities that you were able already then to show where you want to go. So this is 
what we are looking for. Uh, um, so, of course, there are certain um, predispositions or maybe uh, intrinsic coordination, maybe strengths uh, that we are looking for. There, there has to be some knowledge as well uh, uh, in, in ballet and modern. Um, but this, um, the drive, uh, the need to express uh, yourself, the curiosity, uh, willingness also to collaborate, to, to um, communicate uh, is also really important. Um, uh, curiosity to uh, learn, uh, to exchange, um, this is what we are looking for, and this again, this unique uh, in in each one of the dancers where we believe nobody is the same, right? Yeah. Um, we really take time during auditions also to get to know our uh, the candidates. It's Absolutely. important, I think, from both sides that we get to know uh, the candidates or you potential uh, students and other way around. So that's why this year uh, we also, in many locations, especially abroad, we have a day of a workshop. So this is opportunity also for the, for the candidates to, to get, get to, to know, know other, yeah. how we uh, work, but also other way around, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, and in a way, it's also a scouting moment because also for the ones that maybe think, oh, I'm not yet ready, but I want to audition next year. But this is opportunity to, to take... Also. Yes, to take a workshop, to yeah. learn, to get to know us. Um, so we encourage you also to do that, actually. <laughs> Um, and how are the audition gonna be this year? Live. <laughs> we are really happy, right, about it. Um, uh, and hopefully it, everything will go well. We uh, yes. really believe this is going to happen. But uh, yes, we have missed uh, meeting people live uh, right, and experiencing that. Yeah. It's exciting for us. And we are also even nervous, actually, <laughs> right? We are not used anymore. No. <laughs> Going live. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's really wonderful to, to meet people from all over the world because this is what happens. People yeah. come freely from all over the world. And uh, it's an exchange moment. It's a really uh, important moment for us and um, uh, also for for you that are watching us so don't forget first of march is the deadline <laughs> please apply yeah, if you <laughs> haven't done so far <laughs> um okay thank you so much sarah sanya sorry that's okay <laughs> we so have a lot of <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure <laughs> there there will be some questions also thank you so about much, yeah. i wanted to ask savali actually if uh, she has some question for us So I'm just going to go through as many as we can. Um, first off, actually, I had one for the students, if that's OK. or Yeah? OK, so there's a question. Would you guys mind describing a typical day for you in school as a student? Yeah, sure. So I'm a second year, so I'm going to talk about the second year. And for us, we normally have ballet every day and then a modern class. And then we have a lunch break where we can be with our friends and enjoy. And then after that, for now, we're having a project about Cunningham. That is a technique that we're doing. And we're starting also with rehearsals that are going to continue until third year. And yeah, I think that's mostly Some it. theory classes? Some theory classes, not every day, but every week we every have week. them. Yes. And yeah, this is for second year. I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to... Yeah, I can also say maybe a word uh, for what we're doing in the Lovely. third year. So it's going to be a bit more short because at this point we're really working on the tour that mm -hmm. will be happening very soon. And uh, we are always starting the day with a ballet class. To we keep on this tradition until the very last moment. <laughs> and uh, then we go on for rehearsing <laughs> and we rehearse and uh, we keep on doing that for the day. Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So the intro video was well liked. Is it? It's on YouTube, right? Which one? The the intro video, the first one. There was uh, a question the if they can see it. I think so. I they think can see it again. I think it is, yeah. yeah, it will be on YouTube. Um, then there was a question about um, if there is an age restriction for the auditions. 
Um, well, we uh, we have advices and not restrictions, um, and that is uh, about twenty two if somebody is applying for the second year, uh, and twenty for the first year. And why is that? Um, simply because the career of the dancers is rather short, and we see also uh, that. Um, it is really important to uh, acquire knowledge at a younger age so that uh, as soon as possible dancers can go to the companies. And most of the time if somebody is older than that, they, uh, they already have some experience. But it's um, at the same time we are not discriminating either age or any other uh, uh, in an any other way and people are welcome. But this is advisable, let's mm -hmm. say. All right, thank you. Um, there was a question, how many people pass the first year? All, Everybody? unless sometimes students get an injury or mm -hmm. some get homesick, we have had that too. So sometimes people uh, yeah, step out of the education th themselves for those reasons. But overall, everybody that we take in, we know we like them so much that we want to help them to reach their potential yes. and we do everything to make that happen. There's no auditions for any next years. There's no cuts no, or anything. Officially, Once there is in. a test moment huh? in, in Holland, the whole system. It's a bachelor degree. After one year, you receive your pro producer and there are restrictions to if you can continue then. So in a way, we could say uh, the first year, maybe this is not your study. Maybe we don't see it happening. And then we can say maybe you have to leave. But I think overall, no, it doesn't happen. No. Good. Thank you very much. Um, there was a question about how the school adapts to a lockdown. How do the classes change? Maybe students can uh, yeah. answer. We go Let's for it. Hear from the students. Hopefully we don't have any more lockdowns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we don't have to change. Or so yeah, here come the subject of uh, COVID. Yeah. We couldn't avoid it. <laughs> but uh, no, I may say that in quarters. Because uh, I've experimented the first lockdown when I was in my first year, as well as Andrea there. So we really could see yeah, how the whole school adapted to the situation as the world did. And uh, we've been very, very lucky for that because basically we could have take all the classes, still uh, see all the guest teacher, still learn some new repertoire with a guest choreographer. We really could have all the hours that uh, we were expecting to have. Yeah. And that didn't change for us, right? Yeah, hopefully they, they managed to do as much as they could. And yes. uh, we went only in... Uh, uh, Zoom education for, yeah, for really a short period mm -hmm. of time, but then we were able to be live, maybe in smaller group, but still we were able to yeah. come to school, which is great, and it's unique opportunity. Yeah, we Not just had to adapt. School, it yeah. happened. Yeah, we adapted just a little bit to just follow the yeah. the rules, you know, the but rules, uh, yeah, it the didn't affect us uh, yeah. as much as other other schools. Or yeah, yeah of course. we have been very really lucky. Yeah. lucky. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Yeah. Um, there is a question. Um, if the curriculum, does it change a lot? Like, it w is it likely to change in the next few years or does it stay the same? I think we're always evaluating what mm -hmm. needs to be changed. And it also depends on how the work field is changing and how the world is changing. And now with COVID, we don't know what's going to happen. So again, we always have to look forward. And so we see what's necessary and then we look back on how we have to adapt the curriculum. Yes. Okay. Uh, there was a, a quick practical question about if there is a COVID vaccine necessary for the auditions. Is there a lie? Um, we follow the rules uh, of the country that we will, where we will held auditions. Uh, and each country uh, has different demands. So this is something uh, to always consult within the country. If somebody is coming, what are the rules? I doubt that there is something about the vaccine, but I, uh, it's, of course, uh, maybe testing or self-testing, but information will be uh, shared with the candidates. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about the merge with the Erasmus University and whether that will affect the dance department. We have to see, yeah? yeah. I hope in the positive. Yeah. yeah, I think it adds all new chances. But mainly the merge will have to do also with uh, developing new educations together. Uh, take something like film music. We have music here. 
uh, the other school has film, so we can find maybe new educations in the future. And the same with Erasmus University. Uh, there is already a program in Code Arts called Razzle, where you can do two degrees. Uh, one at the uh, Erasmus University and one at Code Arts, but we don't do that in the dance department because it's impossible uh, since our schedules are full with dance. And that's different with music. There's much more self-study involved. But yeah, in collaboration, I think uh, there will be possibilities. Also ones that we don't know of yet. Very exciting. Okay. Um, there was a question about the Erasmus. I think this is about the exchange program whether this will continue this year because last year it was COVID uh, canceled due to COVID. Um. Yeah, the Erasmus exchange has to do with our uh, uh, pre-education that's mm -hmm. also here in Code Arts and that will start up again right. as long as it will all go. Right, fingers right. crossed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a question about uh, the auditions for non-EU dancers. Uh, will they be invited to a live audition or is that video or how does that go? Um, the we offer opportunity for non-EU uh, and uh, candidates from overseas, basically, to do audition on video. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole procedure already there. Uh, after the first selection, we will see uh, per individual is it possible for them to come also to school to visit us, or we will already take into consideration what they have sent us for the final selection. All right. Thank you. Um, there was a question about living situations. Is there student housing provided by the school? Or um, how does that go for students to find a house? Um, we don't have a campus, unfortunately, yet. Maybe in the future, who knows? Um, but uh, the students uh, quite enjoy uh, the way it is now. It's uh, it's a search in the beginning, but maybe you can tell a little bit, Julia. Yes, how is the I'm living situation? actually a non-EU person. So uh, actually, when I came here for the first time, I had quite some difficulties finding an apartment. But Quadrats has actually a department that helps. That is the housing of Quadrats, so you can always ask them, and also the. Dutch people can help, but normally there are websites that you can search for and hopefully you can share house also with another coder student. So after you have your results, you can always exchange messages and start to talk to them. And for me, for example, I shared the house with uh, two other girls that were also coders and we lived together for a year and it was, was great. And after you're here also, it's much easier to 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 find and to search and you already will know the city and you will know the people so you don't have to worry about it but yeah unfortunately there is no campus still but I like the idea in the future maybe <laughs> but yeah it's, it's yeah. okay but basically sharing apartment and, and kitchen and the facilities right and, yes and this is the fun part also exactly right? yeah okay. for sure <laughs> Maybe we do have to mention that the prices are rising in Rotterdam, yes. like everywhere in Holland. Uh, so I think by now you pay around 450, 500, 500 yeah. Yeah, less, yeah. for a room that you share, bathroom and kitchen. Yes. Yeah. So people have a bit of an idea. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, it's always been like one of the best parts of like studying here is now that you share everything, like both your school and your personal life with your classmates, I think, is very fun. Um, there was a question. Um, will there be... This is the last question. Uh, will there be an audition in Barcelona last year? Uh, last year. Next year. Sorry. <laughs> this, year. This, this year. This year. It said next year. Well, for sure, this year we are auditioning in Barcelona. And mm -hmm. I, I believe next year next as year. well. I don't see why wouldn't we. So, yes, Wonderful. absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Great. That was Thank it. you so much, Stavali. Thank You're you. Welcome. And we will do later also another Q&A. Uh, so if you have other question, please uh, continue send us uh, um, any other questions via online. And we can continue watching another short videos about uh, Codart's alumni, uh, Kim Coleman. So enjoy it. I've been dancing for a long time. Like I think I started when I was nine. I did the audition for the Havo of Music and Dance and passed it. So after a second year of 
normal high school, I decided to change. I was really shy, wanting to do really well, of course. I didn't ever do professional dancing. I thought it would, like, I suddenly had to put, like, the whole specific outfit and everything. And I was very nervous. I remember being quite nervous for the first few months. And then starting to adjust. I remember feeling so at home, like, so comfortable with all the, the people, like, really feeling like I actually had my place inside and, yeah, that's how it started. I enjoy moving, like, it's something I can't without. So this, I think, I realized quite young. I, it wasn't necessarily dance always, but uh, I loved moving. And um, I also remember being inside this environment with people from all over and uh, it's really, it's really inspiring. Like it's so diverse and it's so hard and it's so beautiful and it's so challenging. Coders for me is a physically a very strong place. Like you really learn your body, you learn how to use it, you learn the extremes, the yeah, for me it was really my adolescent growing up with them in a way which is quite, quite special. Yeah, like trying your boundaries, see how far you can push them, what is, yeah, all these things. I think it's, uh, it's all part of this place for me. So yeah, so I'm dancing with Hoffa Schechter Company right now and for about four and a half years. It's that uh, excitement of being like all responsible and for something that you're, you're gonna share, I think. Yeah, and the traveling with it, I think that it, it bonds somehow. I think it's something that really, uh, yeah, you don't choose your colleagues, you know? And then once you're on the road, you get to learn them in so many different ways, which is really intimate. <laughs> studio and trying to create something together and create something bigger than yourself you know like something that is just it's your life it's a lifestyle it's not just a, a job I can't contain this life like I can in 10 years I won't be able to to do it and what then that's a little bit the thing that, that is challenging I think that you don't know where it's going you never know how it's going to transform and you just know that you can't do this for the rest of your life, so <laughs> what will happen after? That's uh, yeah, big question. Here we are again. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you are enjoying this evening for the open night of Coders Dance. Um, we continue, and I'm really pleasant to introduce you uh, the coordinator of internship and the work field, Sara Erens. Hello, Hello, Sara. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Good, thank Good. you. Yes. You told me before that uh, you wanted to present a PowerPoint. Is that right? Yes, I thought to make certain things a bit clear with some pictures. Great. I show a PowerPoint. I think it's. Uh, great. Items in the PowerPoint, I would like to uh, talk a little bit more about alumni. And for those of you who don't know that word, it means people, former students that already graduated from CodeArts and are now in the field. I like to talk a little bit more about the connection with the work field. Yeah. How do we bring the work field in the school and how do we bring you guys out of school great. through internships, for example. And um, yeah, also how to practically prepare students for internships yes. and the job. And we have a lot of classes, creative work, uh, repertoire performances, but also practically what do you need in order to find a job and um, um, yeah, a profession or a role in the scene. Yeah. So I'm going to try to share that screen now. Great. Let's hope it works. Yes. I'm also now a third year student, so I know how we it know feels. We know all about to it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the anxious of 
try to get an internship. So it's, uh, yeah, but it's exciting because, you know, there are many possibilities and uh, you actually audition and you understand how the professional work field is. Yeah, but it's a process, no? Andrea? It's a process, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we try to guide you guys very well. So first I want to start a bit about how we connect with the work field. Is it working the PowerPoint? Yeah, good. Um, of course, it's very important and the scene is very big and we really want to know all about it and bring the work field in the school. We do that by a lot of guest teachers. I mean, we have a great set of steady teachers, but the more students enter the program, the more guest teachers come in. And those are usually people that are teaching or choreographing in the field. So they bring in a lot of information, right, Andrea, to uh, the students. Also, we have guest speakers, people that talk about the field, the companies, uh, how it is to be a dancer or a choreographer. We have a lot of guest choreographers coming in. Uh, Keith will explain uh, more about that later. Uh, we do workshops, for example, from dancers in a company. They come on a Saturday and they explain the work and the work methods. We visit performances. We have internship, internship auditions, meetings with alumni. And we perform and tour a lot, and Keith will also explain about that yes. later. Um, preparation and knowledge about the professional scene. I think it's such a broad scene with companies, production houses. It's very important the students learn about what is all out there so they can find their way in it. Now, we also have a model about it. It's called orientation and practice. It's a weekly-ish subject. Um, in that model, we teach the students about which companies are there, uh, what it is to be a freelance artist also, for example. But most importantly, also we prepare students with practical items, like how to write a CV, how to write a motivation letter, a portfolio, and also towards the fourth year, they, fourth year, they have to make their own website. Um, then there are short trainings on various subjects, like network training. What else do we do? Presentation training, um, training on how to make a video, a lot of trainings. Now, here are some. Um, Which I, I, I believe is really important, at least, at least for me, it's something that is a big part of the education because you can really understand how the professional field is and how to relate and create network or... Uh, writing application, which is not something that you that you, you need time to build these skills. I think so. It's, it's yes, it's it takes some time. Huh? Yeah. Mm, nah, these are things they make a CV, a websites, <laughs> and portfolios. <laughs> they all have to do it. <laughs> Third year students, we can really see, really see how well prepared I can say for this kind of situation. We can really see it by uh, sending some videos that now we can do it like faster, being more efficient, aiming for the right thing to show, how to send it, of how course. to contact yeah. people, and we could really see, yeah, the the reason why we are doing this. And I have proof of that. Yes, this is working, <laughs> and that is really nice. Yes, nice, good to hear. Also, <laughs> also, does scholars have? Um, any kind of connection outside uh, for the internship that... Uh no, that's the next um, oh. slide, Andrea. Very good. It's <laughs> <laughs> that good? I shut up. <laughs> yeah, now we maintain... Uh, no, we try to connect as much as possible with companies. You know that. And we're always looking for new companies to connect with internship-wise. Now, I think no, that we connect like companies we can call or write to or they come and audition sometimes or they tell us about auditions with about 50 companies and this is also the way for all of our fourth year students to be able to be out of the house because we don't have a fourth year program here anymore uh, i give you some examples first of some dutch companies and first a bit about the internship that is in the fourth year that is within a professional company or independent production. It's most of the time for a full season, like training, rehearsing, and performing with a professional company. 
and the auditions take place in the third year. Nolan and Andrea can tell you all about it. Now, where do they do the internships? In the Netherlands. Well, basically, we connect with all the Dutch companies. I give some examples. The, the Scapino Band in Rotterdam, they just had audition yesterday, two days yeah. ago. Pony Hansen Danced, also a company in Rotterdam. We have a lot of companies in the Netherlands, by the way. Uh, NDT in Den Haag, 20 minutes away from Rotterdam. Uh, Introdance Club, Guy and Roni. And ICK is a company and production house in Amsterdam. And many more, but I, then we sit here till 12 o'clock. We don't want that. Then, outside of the Netherlands, I choose like four countries we connect with. Oh, company-wise, they all flew in the screen. In Switzerland, that's Luzerne Theater, Bern Ballet, and Ballet Basel. In Germany, Dresden Frankfurt Dance Company, Dance Mind, Felix Landerer, Theater Heidelberg. In Sweden, Skornes Dance Theater, Kohlberg, and the Göteborg Operans Dance Company. And in France, we connect with uh, Ballet National de Marseille, and since this season also with Lyon Opera Ballet. Mm, yes. Now, also in uh, our alumni, um, now I'm share something about our alumni and the companies they are in and what they do, because it shows where your education can lead to when you know where they are. Now, most of them are working in companies. I give you some example. Um, now, here we have Louis Steinmetz. He works in the Staatstheater Hannover, which is the company directed by Marco Goeke. We have here Samuel van der Veer, who just started his first year um, with a contract at NDT2. And we see here, I'm going to say it wrong, Eliana Strachapede. Strachapede, who is dancing and touring a lot in a Belgium company called Peeping Tom. Now, what else do our alumni do? They work also as independent artists, but actually more and more um, also our students um, choose to become independent artists and not necessarily um, work um, for a company or be employed by a company. Independent artists, maybe they have their own initiatives, multidisciplinary projects or choreograph. Anyway, that's the next one. Some alumni, usually after a dance career, they, um, um, well, actually only after a dance career, they start choreographing, not all of them, obviously. Now, the most recent example is Imre van Opstal. She recently stopped dancing at Bacheva and started to devote her time full-time to become a choreographer together with her brother. Or alumni uh, work in dance-related professions, such as teaching. And usually that's also a mix. So either uh, our alumni are in companies or they find a nice mixture of being independent as a teacher, choreographer, creator, multidisciplinary artist, or anything they would like to do and they can do with all the skills they gained. That's it. I'm going to stop this presentation. Great. You can see us again. I think it was really, really clear. Uh, thank you, Sara. Oh. And uh, maybe we can ask uh, Stavali if she has uh, some more questions from the audience that is watching us. Yes. All right. oh, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a bunch of new questions. <laughs> Still some about the audition. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, first, there was a question, if uh, some of the uh, auditioning students um, get COVID just before the audition, what happens then? Can they do it online? They have to contact um, our administration where or where they are registered, and uh, we will offer a possibility indeed online or to send a video 
or see if they can join another place. But uh, absolutely, we stay in touch and we uh, understand how that tricky it is at the moment. Great, thank you. Uh, there was a question. Um, if a student, uh, are they themselves, uh, gosh, <laughs> should a student apply for the second year themselves or is that chosen in the audition by the school? Uh, they can apply, they can indicate in their application if they would like to audition for the second year. Um, and then we will take that in consideration uh, during the audition, basically. Okay, thank you. Um, there were some questions about if there are any workshops organized by the school or summer schools um, that people from outside could join. Uh, well, basically, uh, our partners offer workshops uh, mostly in Italy, in uh, ID Danza in Livorno. So this is our partner, which they have a preparatory, actually, uh, workshop auditions uh, for the school. Um, and sometimes also our teachers, uh, faculty teachers or our guest teachers teach abroad uh, in 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 some in uh, at our partners, and this is the possibility. But here in Rotterdam, we do not offer that yet. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about uh, the waitlist. How many people are waitlisted? <laughs> Sorry, there's a bunch. Of, like it's the most important <laughs> thing. Sorry. <laughs> so the question about the waiting list, right? No, no, the wait. I think the wait. No. No, the, the wait list, like how many people are wait, wait listed for like the auditions if they're not immediately in? How many right. people are on the wait list? Sorry. Um, well, uh, that depends a little bit per year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we have even about 10, 20, up to even 30 on the waiting list. So um, if the, let's say, the competition and selection is really uh, big per year and there's a lot of talent, unfortunately, then we have to um, yeah, um, also work with a bigger list. But I uh, think also especially around COVID, the waiting yes. list was longer. Mm. I think in a regular year, around 10. Yeah, 10, 15. But uh, we communicate on time about those things, let's say. Great. There was one about the audition results. Is there a date uh, on which the results will be announced? Well, of course, after the first selection, the results are announced immediately after final uh, uh, selection as well. And then after that, the very final uh, results will be beginning of May, uh, latest mid-May. Mid-May, okay. 2022, of course. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, there was a question, is there um, a flexibility test on the audition and how are the big are the groups in the audition? Uh, after a ballet, uh, in, during the ballet class and after ballet bar, there will be a short uh, fle flexibility demonstration, not a test only. Um, and uh, sorry, uh, the second, uh, how, how the big, big are, are the, the groups? groups? Okay, so that really also depends per location. So uh depends how big studios are and also uh, concerning the COVID rules in some locations. Uh, we heard already there can be only 12 candidates in the studio, but here at Codarts we have possibilities to have about 25, 30 in the studio because we have also bigger studios. So that depends on location. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question for Sarah. Um, what happens, or ha does it happen that uh, a third-year student doesn't get an internship in a company, and what happens then? Um, good question. It's a question that the third-year students <laughs> ask themselves <laughs> at the beginning of the third year. Um, to be honest, it never happened before. It, sometimes people are a bit later, like let's say towards the end of the season, that still auditions need to be planned. But, um, or sometimes even in September, so beginning of the fourth year, but it actually never happens. Yeah, it sounds uh, strange, but there is just a lot of space for interns. So they can continue auditioning, traveling, or do two short internships, that's also possible, like shorter productions. Uh, we will uh, make it work. 
and a big uh, backup plan, how you say that, backup plan, mm -hmm. but that's somewhere on paper, but we never did that before, is that a, a fourth year student does join the Totem Tour in the third year again. So, but once again, it didn't happen. And by the way, and these days, we also changing, changing some things a little bit. It's also possible for students to create their own project as their internship. And only when they have the desire to really be self-employed, to, to start exploring themselves as an entrepreneur, this is also possible. So this is sometimes a reason why a student is not in a company, but it's on their, their own choice. Right. If they want, we will find. Amazing. That's very reassuring. <laughs> uh, there was a question about um, auditions again. Surprise. <laughs> uh, there was a question, is points technique required? In the audition, no, but also at school. No. No, we don't do it. Uh, sometimes uh, some dancers, because they want to maintain it, they, they train themselves, but no, absolutely not. Um, and then another audition one, and that's the last one I have for now. Um, can you talk a bit about what you would like to see or what you expect to see in solos in the audition? Like um, well, solo, we always advise uh, in a communication that preferably solo is created by the candidates themselves. But of course, they can be also coached or had by uh, their teachers or a choreographer. And what we are looking for there is uh, this uh, next step to see uh, what interests them actually, how they like to move, uh, how they like to express themselves uh, when they perform, um, yeah, their special colors, individuality, uh, s maybe sometimes, you know, some like also to use certain tricks, maybe they, they had a uh, hip hop background or flamenco background, and all of a sudden they want to show off also that. Why not? We enjoy it. So, basically, how they think they can present themselves uh, in the best way. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Tavali, again. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, again, if you have other questions, please uh, continue sending us because uh, we will have another QA in uh, a while. Uh, for now, we can continue watching another short video about the Totem, which is the Talent on the Move, uh, which is the annual tour of Codarts Dance, uh, which also me and Olan next year are going to take, I mean this year, not next year, are going to, actually soon in a couple of weeks we are going to start it, so enjoy it! <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back everybody, here we are again and this video was really exciting and uh, yeah, I really cannot wait because I'm gonna be part of the tour this year, actually in a couple of weeks, so I really cannot wait to be on stage. Uh, it's, it's great and there were amazing videos over there. Um, so uh, now I want to introduce you our coordinator of the tour and uh, the repertoire. Kid Derek Randolph. Hello, Kit. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm excited because I've been waiting patiently and quietly yeah. here. <laughs> More than, than one hour. <laughs> <laughs> one hour. It's like, I get to talk. It's your time. <laughs> <laughs> Take it all. And um, so what do you want to say about the tour? Well, I want to say hopefully uh, we'll have a new trailer out for the tour. Hopefully we'll we'll be able to make that, and you'll f look on you can look on YouTube or uh, and and find it hopefully soon. Uh, the tour is going to start if everything goes well, and we hope the theaters are going to open uh, February the third. And this tour is a tour that we do every year, like uh, like you've heard throughout the evening, and it tours throughout Holland, throughout di di different theaters in Holland. We do between twenty six to thirty performances per year in the tour and it's really set up to give the students the the feeling of being in a company and touring around um with getting on a bus and rehearsing before and spacing and different casts and different theaters and you know really dealing with so when they get to their fourth year and do the apprenticeship they already have a little bit of a knowledge what it is to be in a company and how it is to be in that that sort of situation so We've been doing the tour now. Actually, we've been doing the tour for 10 years. We've had, we actually should have celebrated our 10th year, but that couldn't happen. Um, so we've been doing it for about 10 years, and it started 10 years ago as a sort of project between Yuri Killian and Hans von Manen, and we've developed it since then. And the tour is set up with between eight, sorry, seven to eight small uh, choreographers of 10 to 12 minutes from different choreographers. And through the years, as you saw in the video, we've had Marco Gorka, we've had, we have a relationship with Yuri Killian, where almost every year we do a piece from him. We also uh, have done pieces from Felix Landre, Hofer Schechter, 
We've done pieces from Wayne McGregor, uh, Caetano Soto, and we also like to support the Dutch choreographers who, who live here and work here, who are also internationally famous, like Ed Verbe, uh, people like Jos Frauenrats and Patricia van Dutekum, who's used to work with uh, Jens van Dalen. So we have a really diverse and interesting repertoire. Um, we always try to fit the repertoire to the students that we have. Um, so it's not like we think, okay, in five years' time, we're going to do this repertoire. I look and we see who are the students that we have and what suits them the best and where they're going to shine. Because like we were talking about, it's all about individuality and we want them to shine. And actually, we put the tour underneath what we call the Code Arts Dance Company. So we tour as a dance company so that they really get that full experience of what it is to be in a dance company. And like I said before, hopefully if everything goes well, we start on February the 3rd till the 10th of June uh, to about 25 uh, theaters throughout Holland. And yeah, I'm hoping that it's going to be a great experience. And they're also um, uh, guided during the tour, so it's not like we just send them off and they do their thing. They have two tour directors and also myself, and I'm actually the head uh, rehearsal director. Uh, and we tour them around and we, 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 we take them to the theaters and we rehearse them and we give them warm-up and there's food provided. So it's really sort of a family company situation that we try to uh, yeah, establish for you. And Part, eh? oh, the bus the ride part. back with yeah. the drinks. <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yes. The drinks in the bus. You know, <laughs> they asked. You know, we have we have our we have our tour manager, and it's always the question: Cool, can we have free drinks now? <laughs> can we have the free drinks? And you mentioned before that uh, there is a big tour in uh, Holland. Yes. But is it only in Holland? No, it's not. Um, before COVID, we used to do a lot of different tours. Sign, you mentioned A A E D in Italy. We sometimes go to Luca to perform in their festival there. We've also been to the we've been to New York to do a joint performance with the Ailey School, and they've also been here, the Alvin Ailey School in New York City. That was about four years ago. We've also been twice to Russia to with different kinds of um, uh, projects. We also do other little things. Uh, sometimes there are projects like every three years there's a big project in Germany where all the German dance schools get together and have a symposium and talk about the next couple of years and they always invite other schools and we've always been invited to that. Um, we've also, before COVID, we used to have a partnership with a school or uh, an organization in Poland that we would go to. Uh, so we do try as much as possible to tour outside of Holland as, as if we can. Uh, so we actively try to push that because it's also important. And it's also important for the students to have that feeling of being on a tour outside of the country. And how does that feel? Because that's, they're also going to yeah, experience that in their companies. And you also see maybe the change of the students from you know before the tour and after the tour. How, how is that? Definitely. Well, you see, this, you see the change uh, throughout the year. So, um, so to get to there, you know, in the first year, as, we ex as uh, Caroline explained, you know, we're, 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 we're in the first year, you're not touring. We're doing mainly things in-house. So there's a, a project that we do with three different choreographers. And then there's a project that we do at the end of the year, which is a grand project. So, you know, we're building up that sort of performance because some students come to us and they haven't as performed as other students, as much as other students, or they haven't worked with choreographers. So we're trying to give them all the same experience. And in the second year, that experience builds with the Cunningham project that Julia is about. So that's also about taking... Uh, creative ideas from another choreographer and developing those. But at the same time, we start to introduce different choreographers from different choreographers. So about four or five choreographers come in and start working with the students on different pieces, big pieces, duets. Um, and also we do little projects here and there so that they're building up the rep we're building up the repertoire and they're building up their experience. And then the third year was just focused on the tour. So we bring in some more choreographies and for some from September to January, we're working on repertoire. And what happened actually during the COVID, we, we, we needed to find other ways of giving our students experience. So we started taking the repertoire from our archive and using that and building it up. And I th we thought that's something good to keep. So, you know, everyone has something to do and we can do different performances for different theaters. And we don't we always have to take a big piece and make it smaller. No, we have something else. So now I think we have about 12 or 14 pieces that are that we can take from doing the tour. So everyone has something to do. Everyone can grow. And that's really important to give all the students the opportunity to, to grow. So they all have something that they can bite their teeth into and grow. And at the end of the tour, hopefully 
feel as though they've grown. And you do see a growth. You do see a growth. For every day on stage doing eight different pieces, there is a growth that's going to happen. And you do see it. And it's a wonderful growth to see. Great. And as you mentioned before, you already mentioned some choreographers maybe. Uh, but which kind of repertoire maybe uh, should students expect? Um, like I said before, it's different. Every year is different. I mean, as you saw in the video, there were some more pieces based on floor work. There's that, you know, sort of classical, uh, coming from a classical standpoint, which we say Yuri Killian is. Um, we've in the past done very, very experimental things. Yes. Uh, so it depends on, on the students. It depends on what, we, what we're looking for. Um, we're also trying, always keeping our nose to who are the choreographers that are interesting now you know, the up and coming choreographers, the younger choreographers, and also giving them a space. So you can expect a very diverse repertoire. And even if there are pieces that are not going on the tour, there are pieces that can be done in other places for other situations. So it's a very diverse uh, repertoire. We try to keep it as diverse as possible. Of course, we have a vision. And of course, we have a mission that we, you know, we're training dancers to have a strong technical base. So our repertoire is coming from that. But it's not to say that we don't do things that are out of the box. And that's also very important. Great. Thank you so much, Keith. And uh, would you like to add something um, else? No, I think, I think actually, you've seen everything in all the videos and yeah. stuff. <laughs> so there's not much. Like, I was sitting there thinking, <laughs> what can I say? But there's not really, really much I can say. Uh, no, that's it. That's it. That's it. Great. So we can ask Stavali if she has uh, the, for the last Q&A, if you have other more questions. Absolutely. I think there's one more still, right, oh, here okay. after this, Great. just to be sure. So continue um, sending questions. <laughs> yeah, keep sending. Uh, I have a few. Um, there was a question for some information about scholarships. Sorry, they're mixed again. So could anyone tell me a bit about scholarships? We all could. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah we, we don't have many scholarships. So for people from outside the, of the European Union, we have two a year. And we have a scholarship called the Cory Harting Foundation. She's the founder of the old Rotterdam Dance Academy. Uh, the, prize is or the scholarship is named after her and that you can receive from the second year on. And there are around, and we have a Yiri Gillian Foundation scholarship. There are two each year, Cory Harting four each year. But that is something, uh, there are not that many. Okay, and the students have to figure this out themselves, or does the school There's information them? on the website, uh, and for the Cody Hartung and Kilian, they will be informed the moment they are in the school. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about the ballet method taught in the curriculum. Is there one specific method, or...? No, we have different teachers coming from different... I also teach ballet, and we have teachers who have had careers at the National Ballet. We've had teachers who've had careers at Dance Theater, Netherlands Dance Theater. So the, and also the, rep, the ballet that you get from the different guest choreographers are coming from. So we're not doing just the Vagana, you know, the Chiquetti. It's, a very diff, it's very different. And I think that's important, especially in this time and age, to, to have those different influences from different techniques that you're not just stuck in one ballet technique. And that's very important to us. OK, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, very funny. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's a girl, and she asked, she's already studied uh, two years in a different dance bachelor. Is there any way that if she would audition, would that be considered in her applying here and, and continuing her education here? Uh, we uh, always look in the moment of the audition where the candidate is uh, because it's impossible to compare the school and just say if that's a sufficient. So the best way is to do audition. And uh, of course we take uh, into consideration, uh, but it's not guaranteed uh, that uh, somebody can enter in our third year, let's say. Right, okay, thank you. Then um, there was one question about if there are any somatic classes offered, like yoga or Pilates. Um, could you elaborate? You, maybe students can talk yeah. about it. Yeah, let's talk. Yes, absolutely. Um, in the <laughs> first year, we have uh, yoga and also conditioning classes. And then throughout the second year, we start with Pilates as well, which I think is very important, all of them, for me. And yes, and we have them every week, and they're great. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and then I had uh, one question about uh, the casting process within the school 
and if all students get an equal chance to participate in all the projects and performances? Yes. Um, we're in education. And in the end, we have to educate you and you have to, you know, you're, you're, it sounds very sort of, you know, borderline, you know, but you have to get grades. <laughs> They're grades. So, yes, everyone gets the opportunity. Um, we try to create a, a sort of a two world system where we're educating, but we're also trying to give you the experience of how it is to be in a company. So, there are castings done, and choreographers come in and decide who they want. Sometimes there are pieces that uh, we decide who's going to be in what. We sometimes look, okay, how do, you know, maybe the, we have to the, rebalance it a bit and somebody can you know, do this piece and that piece. So it's, it's some, we're always looking to see how we can make it work. So we use different systems. But in the end, everybody dances. All right. Thank you. That was my last question for now. Thank you so much, Stavali. Thank you. And now is the moment to introduce uh, our fellow students, Nolami Yu and uh, Giulia Finardi. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Andrea. Hello. 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 How are you? Good, thank Amazing. you. Amazing. After yeah. a full day of classes, we're yeah. here. <laughs> feeling happy. <laughs> <laughs> great, great to hear. Um, so I have some questions for you. Uh, for instance, how um, your journey in colors have been so far? Hello. Yeah, okay. So I think all of us already said that, but I would like to say again that I think what was is being most important for me right now, I'm in the middle, so I'm halfway the course, is that you can really feel that they're helping you to build your own independency, which I think is what I most value right now. So I think from the moment I stepped here, it's like I'm building my own trajectory and you're going to feel that you're a special person and they're going to look at you as an individual. And I think that's just great here. Yeah. Great. Would you like to add something else? Yeah, I completely agree with what you just said. And uh, what I can, uh, I can say that I just have one year more than you now. And the thing is that now arriving with the, in this last year, we can really see this, uh, everything what, that we learned slowly like coming to, to really to an end and everything like coming to a reason. And yeah, this is very strange to see, but uh, also yeah. very, we are very grateful for that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how do you experience diversity in the school instead? Yeah, this is a this is a really strong uh, strong point of uh, of Godard's of <coughs> of Godard's. Uh, we are over we are from all over the world, and it's really great because we can uh, meet different culture. We can meet a different country that we've never been, you know. Yeah, yeah we've never know about uh, yeah. this way of living or. And I think also all the different personalities that the different cultures bring can. For me, at least, I, when I observe all of them, I get so inspired because we're so different. But somehow we're able to bound so well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about everything. Like, we can speak about food, uh, dance, art, yes. so, but music. It's very fun to listen to some Portuguese or Italian <laughs> rap that I would never <laughs> Mamma know. Mia. Mamma mia. <laughs> yeah, we can. We get to know, of course, uh, as we can, but uh, many languages. So, yeah. yes. and this is really yeah, great. Which is amazing. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel improved after two years, after three wow. years of school? I think, for me, um, <laughs> wow, I don't even know. I am a totally <laughs> a different person, a different dancer. That I actually was not expecting to this drastic change to happen. I, I'm, I'm impressed. Like I, I don't even know what to say. I'm. <laughs> Like you start to know your body in a way that you never thought you would be able to do, I think, to put in words. Right. Yeah. And we also arrive at Coders at, the, at an age, I mean, we're still not that old, but in which in, in three years or two years, we change so much. It's really crazy. We can also speak just physically if, we, if, we, if you check the pictures that you did in during the first <laughs> yes. year. It's, yeah. it's crazy, really. And how much you learn exactly about your body, about the world, about about the world of dance also, how many companies, how many things you didn't know that you could do or that are possible. Yes. It's and did you feel nice. Codarts was supportive uh, during these years? Of course, of course, especially now with COVID. For me, uh, the way we, the way they, you all adapted for us to be here, it's crazy. Like all the opportunities we still have and had when things were so, so hard, I think is the proof that here we are really supported. Also with the, psychologists and all of these things, I think it really makes it a full program when it comes to this level. And, and I actually, can, yeah. yeah. I can go also go. add again for 
again is uh, because uh, this is the only difference that we have that now we are slowly entering into this uh, into researching a, a job right and yeah. we can really understand also what the connection with the companies mean because we've been hearing that since uh, the very beginning also f from uh, our fellow student from uh, like uh, years before and it really makes sense now yeah. how we can go or they can come you have a different email you have audition for yourself the, you know the repertoire you know the teacher they've come here before and it's really a really a great uh, great asset like it's really really good yeah and i think also another question about how is rotterdam you know it's a city that uh, you're living in and yeah. i think it's important aspect as well yes um rotterdam is a very alive city i come from a also big city in brazil but when you come here you still feel that you're welcome um Yes, I mean, I have to say, it can get very cold. I, I <laughs> must yes. say that, but that's <laughs> not... <laughs> and rainy as well. But that's not something that would stop you from coming if you really want to. I think that's just a detail. But I'm sure you're going to feel good here in the city. It's a very alive city. Like It's not chaotic, but it's still very lively. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, totally. And uh, full, of fr full of other students, not only dance. Yeah, no, there true. is so many... Now with COVID, it really changed a lot. But uh, the little that I also could see in my first year, you know, I saw a lot of lot of bars, lot of museum, lot of parks, uh, all of things, lot of events. It's a very young city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can totally say that. And I don't know if you remember. This is my last question. Uh, how was your audition, for instance, when you did it? I think many people are watching us and they want to apply, yeah. probably from Calder. <laughs> so well. Uh, for you? my year was a bit different because again it was during the hardest part of COVID. So uh, we, I was gonna come to the Netherlands to do the audition. It was already all set, and then unfortunately everything turned around and the auditions were cancelled. And then they gave us the option to do it all on video. So I had to record a video with a ballet class and the flexibility check and a solo and all of it, and also an interview talking a bit about you, what you like. Who are you? And then we had to send. And then after that, the selection was made the same. But yeah, I, well, I didn't have the chance to do the audition live. So if you have, please do it. <laughs> because we really would like to have to. Yeah. And uh, I, also want, uh, I also could uh, choose the, the location where to do the audition, which is really a great thing also. Whenever you're living in the world, you can choose the one more practical for you. And. Uh, yeah, you get uh, you get to meet uh, some teachers already. You're gonna see which uh, kind of class you're gonna find. It can depends of the teacher. Maybe it's gonna be some laban. Maybe you're gonna have more impro. Maybe you're even gonna do some repertoire. You're all gonna see this. Great guys, thank you so much. Thank and you. And now we go back to Stavali. Yes, are you ready? I am ready. Yes. I have. I think I have. I have four more questions. A bit mixed. Um, the first one was about tuition for non-EU students. Now, you could maybe say something, and uh, because that's different for both EU and non-EU. Yes, so the tuition for the non-EU is a bit more expensive, but you, can also, you have also the chance to apply for the scholarships. Uh, there are not so many, but once you get your results and you're approved, you can also contact the team and they will help you with it. And yeah, I think there are five or something like this. But yeah, we, as non-EU, you you have to pay a bit more. <laughs> right. Um, then there was a question about uh, the background that dancers are required to have. Are there dancers accepted that don't have a ballet background or a contemporary background? Yeah. 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 They are. Yeah. 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 yeah they are. I yeah, <laughs> Nolan, Nolan's shaking his head, yeah. <laughs> like Sanya said before also, there needs to be some knowledge in the body, but it doesn't matter that much where the knowledge comes from. And yeah, I just want to say how we could also see, we before coming here, we all expect to have like a super great uh, ballet technique already. But we can see, for example, now uh, how much you change in, uh, in those three years. And mm -hmm. the people that were coming from different uh, backgrounds, and some of them were very, very uh, f only doing urban or yeah, hip hop. And you know how much you change, and everything is um, manageable in those three years. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually really agree. Um, <coughs> sorry. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, when I started, we had a big range of uh, people who were coming from a super classical background or people who had done ballet for one year, and it really pulls together really nicely, and it's not a requirement, uh, which I think gives a really nice, relaxed atmosphere. Also, in ballet classes, it's not anything very shaped, but very sensation-oriented. I think it's a very, very interesting point of viewing ballet. Um, then there was a question about the nationalities and how many, like, is there a ratio for people being accepted from the EU, non-EU, how many Dutch people? No. 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 No, we just look what the talent is. And we do look at all those individuals. So at some point in the end selection, we try to make it as mixed as possible, but not based on where you're from. Yeah, an equal boy girl. We try, yeah, we try. Equal boy yeah. girl. Equal boy girl. So because we, it, I or mean, yeah, or yeah, where you where you refine, where you find yourself in that in that in that category, but we really try to have an evenness throughout the school. Right. Okay. Yeah. From experience, I would say that um, for me, uh, being Dutch, there's four Dutch people in my year, then one or two in the years above. So there's a small portion of Dutch people, and then a rather large portion of Italians usually. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but it is mixed every year, right? And there's a lot no of French this year French and Spanish. Spanish. Year. Spanish. It really changes. Yeah, yeah as every Carolyn said, different. it's all about talent. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and then there was one last question. I was not really sure how this went down. There was a question about a workshop uh, to get to know the school and stuff that was mentioned in the beginning. And yeah, the auditions when we do the auditions. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, we do auditions in uh, Spain, uh, Portugal, Italy, and France. And one day before the audition, we also offer workshops. So I think it was about that, probably. I um, think so, yeah. Right. Uh, workshops, meaning also to get to know the school, uh, to get to know each other, to taste what it is, right? Okay. It's not compulsory. You can Candidates can only join the audition. But it's nice to also follow the workshop. Right. Okay. Thank you. That was my last question. Thank you so much. I, I have one more thing yeah. to ah. add. Uh, okay. We were mentioning boy girl. Right. Lately, we are in the discussion about people who feel not belonging to a gender, which exactly. we are also open for. Yes. I think now we start to name it more, but it was always in our DNA to choose people based on what they can show us about themselves and who they are and find with them their individual search wherever it goes. Can I say one other thing about Rotterdam? Uh, I don't, um, <coughs> just also know about Rotterdam, it's a very cultural city, and we must not forget the fact that there are a lot of theaters here and a lot of companies that come in through this, so you're going to see a lot. You're going to see a lot of all the big companies come through, and The Hague and Amsterdam are only a half an hour with one train and 20 minutes with the other. So the cultural... Uh, experience that you'll have living here, not only with diff me meeting different cultures, but seeing different companies and theater and opera and other experimental things is so great. It's a, it, that opportunity is really wonderful in this country and we must, must express that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I think we are going to Hanent. Is that right? So I wanted to thank you everybody for your patience and uh, for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for Caroline, Sanya, Sara, Kit, Julia, Nolan, and Stavali. And thank you to the administration, the production. They, you cannot see them, but they are behind. And they did an amazing job here for all the setup and for all the technological uh, stuff. So thank you so much. And thank you, Andrea. Thank Very you so much. Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And have a good evening. And uh, thank you again so much for being here. Bye.